Hey YouTube, MJ here with another video review. This time we're going to be looking at the Excellent Toys Petroleum uh, CRM001. I'm assuming Petolmy is how it's pronounced. Um, he is there, super deformed or chibi, however you want to refer to it as. IDW Optimus Prime. Um, he also has a Generation 1 mode that we'll get into. Um, I'm going to start off with the big warnings cause before we get into the review because I do really like this toy, but there are a few things you should know before you even consider buying it. Uh, number one, right out of the, is pretty minor, and it might have just been mine, but right out of the box, uh, there was some flashing issues on one of the joints, and as you can see, because of the flash, I did get a stress crack right away. Um, I did trim the flash on that that joint as well as a couple other ones just to make sure that it doesn't happen again and since then he's been fine. Uh, the more glaring problem that I think a lot of people are going to have is the fact that with a lot of these kind of transformers and gun and model kits when they do them is he's very heavily a parts former. So if you have a problem with parts forming, you're not going to like this toy. For that, as a transformer, you may still very much like him as an action figure. At least I do. Alright, so, as you can see, truck mode is inspired by the IDW one. Uh, rolling, it's basically all of his tires. He's uh, got two in the front, and then eight in the rear. Uh, each one is an independently rolling wheel, so I think that's a nice touch. And now we'll get into the transformation of him. First thing you're going to do, pop off the wind vane, pop off the side guards, and the same thing on the other side. And we'll set those on the side. Flip the wheelbase is back. Slide off the entire front cab section. Again, we're getting into that parts forming feature. And straighten out the legs. Rotate them around. 180 degrees. Rotate the feet around and flip them up and then flip up the kneecaps. Same thing on the other side. Come around to the back, slide the arm forward and then rotate and then back and then rotate it out and position it as an arm. Same thing on the other side. Come around. Um, because I have that stress crack, and I'm also going to recommend it just for anybody, uh, put pressure on both of these hinges so that way that they're evenly balanced, and then fold it down. And then slide the arms out so they're in, slid over into the center section of that groove. Alright, we're going to do the G1 version first. Uh, just because I think a lot of people are more interested in this as an IDW right because there are a lot of G1 SD Optimus Primes. So you're going to want to grab this waist section. As you can see it's got the longer extension. And then it just slides right into the front. Clips in. Rotate him around. You have his rear flap. Now this is going to be the same flap on both the Optimuses, so slide it in, and it'll close out that section. Uh, one of the cooler locking mechanisms, take the hand, as you can see it's got a key shape, so what you're going to do, have the hand rotate facing behind the arm, and slide it into the keyhole. Rotate it around, which will lock it in place, and then pull out on the hand, which will extend the arm completely into its actual positioning. Do the same thing on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
Now the next thing you want to do, grab the exterior arm, the G1 style exterior arms, which are just a flat arm. Come around to the side and plug them in. And that's going to finish off the forearm. As you can see, he's a very squat and bulky robot for Optimus Prime, and I actually like that. Next thing, zoom out a little bit. You're going to want to grab the G1 style shoulder pads. Now if you look inside, you're going to see a little blackish gray piece. That's going to be your locking mechanism. Now, what I did with mine, uh, when I got it, this was having trouble locking in. There's a little screw on the back, just slightly loosen that, and that'll make it this a lot easier, because this tongue goes into between the gray and the red exterior of his arm, and that's how you get his arm to lock in. Make sure his arms are fully extended outward. And as you can see, even after I loosened it, it's still a very tight slide joint. Come on. Let's see if the other side works a little smoother. And it does lock in at several different clicking points. So yeah, it must have loosened the one side a lot more than the other. There we go. Now the next part is going to be another one of those specific items. You have two neck pieces. You have this one, and you have this one. Uh, this one's for the Generation 1 style look. It's for the IDW split windshield. So you're going to want the Generation 1 one, and then just take your Optimus Prime head, and plug them on. And there you have Patrolame in uh, Generation 1 mode. As you can see, it's it definitely takes a lot for him because he couldn't do a full-on G1 mode with all the design features that are characteristic of the IDW. But I think it's a nice extra transformation and a good representation. Now that that's done, we'll go on to the next mode, which is probably the reason a lot of people were looking at this, and that's the IDW mode of him. So what you're going to do, take off the front crotch section, take off the side panels on the arms. Take off the G1 shoulder pads. And then you have basically a naked prime. And we'll take off the head. So we'll start off with the head. In this case, what we're going to do, wiggle out the neck piece. Set that aside, grab the forehead crest, and slide it out. Again, all the joints are very tight, and it's nice. And then pull out the faceplate, and see, we'll zoom in on that. We have the G1 style faceplate. Versus the IDW, which is a much more sharp and angular faceplate. So there's a little tongue on the back that just slides in and grooves into the face. I recommend looking at it from the bottom because you're going to need to fin out, fan out that a little bit just to make sure it locks into place right. And then secure the head crust on. There you have the IDW head. Next thing, bring over Optimus Prime. Fan open his chest. Take the IDW neck piece and secure it in. And close the windows as much as they will close. And plug in the head. 
Next up, the crotch piece. A uh, nice thing about this one is it doesn't have the side skirts, so it's just a flap in the front, which is you're going to like because of when we get into articulation. For an SD style figure, he's got a lot of it. Come around behind. There's two little wind vanes, and you're just going to plug those into the back. Um, regarding these, uh, I did show it without them on in G1 mode because that's how they were recommend it. Uh, what I actually do for mine is when I transform him, because the wind vane pretty much covers everything, I just kind of rotate them around so they flow with the wind vane so that way you don't actually have to unplug them every time. Plug in the other side. Position it right. Make sure my arms are locked into place on the forearm. Then you're going to grab, you took these off when you were originally transforming him. So when it's in vehicle mode, it's plugged into that peg. Robot mode, you're going to plug it into that peg. And just slide it on and flip forward the little handguard. Do the same thing on the other side. Now these ones are actually easier to get on than the G1 one shoulder pads, specifically because they're more open. So we'll just come around, slide it on, plug it into place. Same thing on the other side. Plug it into place. Now come down here, flip out the IDW style shins so you have that flare. And there you have him in IDW mode. Um, as far as accessories, he really only comes with two. Uh, one of them is his gun, which does have a nice G1 style look while also being kind of have that deformed look. And then the other one is, I'm not actually going to show it, it works just like a regular hand except for it's a pointing finger. It's a nice feature, but it's not really important one way or the other. Now the reason that I actually really like this toy, uh, we're going to get into his articulation. Alright, head goes up and down, rotates 360 degrees, everything a head should do. Arms, because they extend out, you get, when you move the shoulder pads, you get an outward swivel, about that much. Depending on the shoulder pad, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, also depending on how you position the arm more, because if it hits that outer guard, of course, rotates 360 degrees around. He has a full 360 degree waist. I'm going to actually pull out the crotch now to show off the hips, which are on a full ball joint. And they're actually a very stable ball joint. Uh, the ankle joint, I wish, was a little stronger, but there we go. There. Bounced on one foot. In a very awkward position, but still fun. All right? It's got a rotation at the hip, just below it. And bend at the knee. A little less than 90 degrees, but I'm kind of okay with that. Now, the joint that I'm most impressed with is the ankle joint. He has a very wide ankle joint tilt, full rotation at the ankle, bend at the toe because of transformation, but it's still bend, and then there's also a rotation at the toe in addition to the already extremely articulated ankles. You can almost have Prime completely doing the splits, with his, just with his ankle joints.
Um, one thing I'm going to say about price point, uh, if you buy him from Chimong Mung, he is priced at, I believe it's $79 plus their shipping prices, which is about $15 if he's the only item you buy with it. It'll be even less because they do, you know, decrease their shipping prices based on how much you order, uh, based on combined shipping totals. So on the high end, you're paying right around 84 for him. Um, I know that sounds like a lot for in what amounts to an SD figure that does a lot of parts for me, but I do want to show a few size comparisons just for reference. First one being the TFC primers, which when it initially launched was about 60 or $70. Dollars. He is a very, fairly large figure. And we'll do another size comparison because I think it's just as important. Here he is with TFC Orion. Now they're both representations of the IDW, Optimus Prime. And what disturbs me is, based on the blacky appearance of Orion and everything, this guy actually looks more like the IDW design to me. Partially because of what you can all do with the, basically the parts forming stuff. Then this guy, his head has always been the biggest issue for me. Um, if you can get him, I do strongly, and you either like SD stuff or are an Optimus Prime collector, I do strongly recommend picking him up. Uh, from what I've seen, I don't think either of the major retailers are carrying him, but I've always had great success ordering from Chimung Mung. Uh, Tony offers great customer service, so I want to recommend him. Not, so there's one of your strong options, as well as eBay if for some reason he's sold out or you just don't want to order from outside the country. They do have a sound wave coming out as their next release, so I will be reviewing him as soon as I can get my hands on one. And I will be looking at a couple other SD figures in the near future. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and I will see you soon.